viewers and friends this is Rupa Jha from Black Swan Business Setup Services and today is the second episode of our series Success in Making as you know Success in Making is all about success stories breakthrough stories and life stories of entrepreneurs in UAE so today in our second episode we have another dynamic entrepreneur in our show whose life has been a roller coaster ride whether it's personal life or professional life he has faced lot of challenges and he faced it and came out as a winner so now today he's not just enjoying his entrepreneurial life he's also helping other entrepreneurs and individuals face their challenges in life and uh, winning them out or you know coming out as winners so we welcome mr munir samnani who is ceo of oxygen management consultancy and founder of mastermind so today we'll hear from mr munir samnani that what he has faced in his life how he has evolved with his life and today where he is going to take us with his experience so let's start with munir samnani that what if you have to tell our audience who is munir samnani in few sentences uh, how will you describe yourself to them so it's an interesting question if i have to describe myself i'll say i'm a father entrepreneur i'm a brother i am a normal person like anyone of you uh, who believes in pushing himself and pushing other people's boundaries that's a great definition so like you said you're pushing other people's boundaries we would also like our audience to know what boundaries you have passed in, a, in your life or what are your boundaries so basically what happens is that everybody wants to be an entrepreneur sometime in their life Definitely. yeah it's it's a goal that everybody has and so i had a goal i was an employee in a company and wanted to start my company as most of the employee or the people would say i want to do a business but i don't have money and i was in the same world where i said i want to start a business but i don't have money and one of my trainer told me once that munir if you want to start a business you don't need money you need an idea if the idea is really good money will flow and you will make money and i think that's what made me do it take that step i started my business with as small as 17000 dirhams that was the only money i had uh, to put it uh, put into it and start my journey and today we are 8 years down the line and today we have almost 60 entrepreneurs working with us lovely only if startups can understand this concept because most of them are crying for funds 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 if they can understand that uh, exactly to start your business it's not about the funds it's about the idea and courage so that's a yeah. great message yeah. okay we got your point that you wanted to start your business you were an employee but how you got into this business why coaching i came across a uh, training and development when i was in 11th grade okay. i saw a trainer and i went to the trainer and i said i want to become like you and he said i don't do it but why don't you support me mm-hmm. so i started supporting i started working with an ngo this was back in india based back in india so i was studying and i was working with an ngo they were teaching me a lot of stuff especially child psychology pedagogy i used to learn that and i used to go and teach and that's where my journey started i was doing science that time in my university and i realized that um, human science appeals me more than the science actual science okay. so i went to my father and i said i don't want to do science i mean i will complete my graduation in science but i want to do something in human science and i want to meet people i want to talk to people and i thought that every time i talk to people i learn a lot i enjoy meeting people i enjoy talking to people and when i make a small difference you know when you are working with an ngo and you make this small 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 difference and when people come and appreciate you saying thank you so much i think that's where that sense of achievement sense of satis- satisfaction started coming in and i said this is exactly what i want to do yes i want to help people and i want to make this as my career and that's how story of coaching and training started okay what were your situation or circumstances at that time and how you landed in dubai when i started working with the ngo i think i was in 11th grade in mumbai aha uh-huh. and i was still a kid but i loved meeting people talking to people learning from people mm-hmm. and that time child psychology and methodology was huge you know early childhood was coming to india and people were talking a lot of about new technology and i was just in awe and wonder saying i want to learn this and i think that's where the journey started i was going to trainers working with trainers for free to learn from them and i was doing small small training and development uh, workshops just to make a difference in people life mm-hmm. and then in 2005 somebody was looking for a trainer in dubai and i was approached and that's how in 2005 i landed in dubai as a trainer my position was training coordinator and my job was to train employees on soft skills so like you said muni that you were an employee you landed here in 2005 so then when did you start your own company 
so then i left my company in 2011 mm-hmm. and then by the end of 2011 i started uh, oxygen which is almost like 12 i started oxygen management consultant oxygen management consultancy so why oxygen so basically when um, we were forming the company i had given you have to give like four names i mean you are in company formation you know so you have to suggest four names i had suggested three names which i had researched a lot and the guy who was going for the application came back and asked me that you have to give me i had to give a fourth name which was whatever i had to say and during that time i was doing one event which was we were naming after the name of the event was oxy generation which was next generation but we wanted to put it oxy generation which means oxygen fresh you know something new part of your life so when he said give me the fourth name i said oxygen and he said are you sure i said yeah he said you have thought of it i said yeah we want to make it fresh we want people to connect with it it's always part of your life you need it that was the rational so he goes inside he goes and then he comes back and says the fourth name got approved so i was like perfect let's go with it so that is how oxygen started yes so before starting your business did you made any plan or business plan a strategy or something or you just uh, by your intuition you went ahead and that you thought that i need to start or is there some you know uh, something some voice came from inside that now you should start how how did that happen of course the voice was there i think everybody has a inner voice where they want to do something so that was the right time also i have always been a trainer and a coach so i always believe do what you do best and do it well so i went through it and i said okay this is what i want to do did i make a plan yes the plan was to start a business did i have a plan that how will i survive for a year frankly speaking i didn't i believe into that i don't know if you've seen my video on tunnel metaphor mm-hmm. you you plan to the for the end of the tunnel but you can only see 200 meters so plan for 200 meters yeah. and then you cross that 200 meters you can see another 200 meters yeah. and you cross those 200 meters so the plan was to have a successful business but that time i could only see few months down the line so i actually planned only for few months okay and then when i was crossing that i planned for another few months and another few months and that's how we've completed 8 years journey now oh lovely so uh, were you from uh, any business bang- background what was your family background what from where are you coming like uh, some people like say that oh business is in my blood in the, is in mm-hmm. my genes and blah blah so where was business in in you so business um I don't think it's in my genes or anything. <laughs> you know, so it's not in my family. So it's an interesting story you ask me. So I come from a from a middle class family. I'm born and brought up in I don't say it loudly, but Dongri and Bindi Bazaar. So you can say born in a chawl system. My father has done six businesses and none of them survived. Okay. So um, it's a classic example where I've seen all the businesses come up and die, and then he started another business and he died. I remember a lot of the businesses. is done business for fish for salt the indian spices masala yeah. so a lot of business is done and he's is failed in his business um and then he went on a job and he's been successful uh, throughout his life on oh. a job personally i just felt that um i can do better you know learning and developing from people so if you ask me i don't come from a business family i don't think i have entrepreneurial or entrepreneurial genes i only have a belief system and i think when you have a belief system mm-hmm. you can do anything you want so my belief system was i want to be an entrepreneur i don't know who's been in my family i mean if poor fathers must have been i don't know in my generation if i look at my father and my, i wanted to be an entrepreneur so right now also my brother uh, works in a company okay. my father has been an employee okay. i'm the only entrepreneur in the family so since you're meeting so many entrepreneurs every day you have seen self made entrepreneurs you have seen entrepreneurs who have got their business by generation so do you think that people who are from business background or business families they are better businessmen than people who are just newly launched in the businesses or who are just who have just started it of their own so if people of people have a business family that is only beneficial if the kid or the person who was growing was involved in the business Mm-hmm. Most of the time, the parents don't involve their kids in the business, mm-hmm. right? They think, okay, when they grow up, we'll involve. I think that's a wrong approach. Again, it's personal, uh, personal uh, point of view. If you involve your child from pre-hand, you know, wherever they can understand. If you involve them, then they start understanding the business, and that's where they tend to overtake that business in a better way and multiply that business. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, we see, we have seen second generation entrepreneurs facing challenges with business because. They, they were not involved in the business okay right again um even if your fa- your parents have not done business if you have a belief system mm-hmm. you know we say it in our coaching language yeah. if you have an earning ability yeah 
right if you have earning ability and you believe in that earning ability mm-hmm. then you can nobody can stop you becoming a business owner wow right that's that's a nice theory yeah. so now uh, just to summarize so you came from bombay from that area uh, you know you worked with ngos with different trainers you worked for free just to learn so you had that zeal for learning and then from there you came to dubai you worked for a company for 5 6 years slog yourself and then you slowly gradually started your company so that's that's a wonderful thing because it's such a gradual approach you worked hard towards uh, your journey so now okay all set and done you have you're ready with your business now you're ready to go what was the challenges that you faced after becoming an entrepreneur because when we are in employees our challenges are different absolutely but when we become entrepreneurs what was what were your if i ask best three or the most difficult challenges So I'll tell you, entrepreneurship is a journey. I meet a lot of entrepreneurs. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. A um, lot of entrepreneurs start their journey and they go through a yo-yo, mm-hmm. right? And it's a very not natural way to do it. Mm-hmm. There's no nothing different in that, and there is no problem if people are going through this. So when I started, uh, I remember I started my business, and the first month I was sitting in my office doing this. Because I don't know what to do, <laughs> where to start with, and who to go and meet. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just sitting there and thinking, thinking, thinking. Was I was coming from an employee mindset where my boss used to tell me what to do next. What to do? Next. And I'm sure a lot of people would relate to this. Is that what do I do? So I sat and I was doodling around, saying, "What do what, what do I do next?" And then I realized that no, I have to start going and talking to people, meeting people. Mm-hmm. Again, was the journey easy? No. I started doing public workshops mm-hmm. where I used to train people in NLP, mm-hmm. and I lost a lot of money oh. because again, I didn't know how it was working. Would I make money? Would I not? That was the only easiest thing I could understood uh, that I that I can make money easily. I started doing that. <clears throat> people were coming, but I started over a period of time losing more money because. you know some people would pay some people would not pay some people would take installment plan and then i would lose money because i had to pay to the hotel and everybody else yeah. uh, my colleagues my coaches or assistants mm. who were working with me and then slowly i realized that no i need to work with corporates so that they get the 10 people and i just have to go and train so i started working with multinationals again multinationals would call you once a year and you would be busy for a month or for a day and then you would be free mm-hmm. because they don't have a regular requirement right so again you go through that yo yo where today you are busy tomorrow you are not and then you are busy and then you are not and then i wanted to look for something which is steady so again that was another learning by saying this is not working what is next and um, i always tell people that you should listen to your clients your clients will always tell you give you ideas and what they want yeah So I remember I was uh, working. I approached a client, and we were doing a training for their twenty staff or fifteen mm-hmm. staff. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a three-day training program, and I was char- charging them a big amount of money. And apparently, the client came and told me that Munir, I want to pay this money to you, mm-hmm. and I want this training, but we don't have three days as a company. Why don't you give me these three days of training, divide it into a ninety minutes training, and give me over six months? Okay, and I pay you the same amount over six months. Mm-hmm. So make it into a monthly retainer. Mm-hmm. And I said, no, it doesn't work. In training and development, doesn't work. It doesn't, you know, I won't get the continuation. You know, we will keep losing the rhythm and all that stuff. But again, your clients are better judged. So I started mm-hmm. listening to her, and I said, okay, let me try it out. And we did this experiment, and it was a super success. Okay. So then I said, okay, I want to work with clients who wants to work with me for six months to one year. Okay. And then I started focusing on SMEs. and sme is my forte so i work with smes over a period of 6 months to one year and i grow them from one point to another point where i see a consistent growth okay so like munir when you are talking about smes and as much we know that in your business there's a lot of competition how do you handle that competition how do you deal with with that competition because in this market there are coaches from across the globe so how how do you handle that I think competition is a little bit a complicated word. Mm. I would make it as people offering the same thing or different things under the same banner. I believe in focusing on my own self, which is is my quality good. Mm. Am I constantly listening to my customers? Am I giving them what they want? And am I going a little bit extra mile to give them what they want? Mm-hmm. Right. So if you look across, I mean, you've been a client. You look across my clients. I really want to build a relationship with my clients. Mm-hmm. Right. I want to ensure that what I give. is actually helping my clients to go to next level right mm-hmm. i am constantly open for feedback and suggestions mm-hmm. uh, if my client come and say money this doesn't work i would like to look into it because 
I don't come from one shoe fits everybody. Got it. Right. So it's more of a personalized hand holding stuff. But I work with my clients, and I'm sure everybody is good what they do. I have a personality to work with. Right. People work with personalities. Yeah. You've also said on LinkedIn, I'm a badass coach, so I have that personality <laughs> where I'm really strict with my clients. I don't allow my clients to, you know, bend down. I am strict my, with myself. I'm strict with my clients, and a lot of my clients like that personality where I'm really strict, pushing them, not taking excuses. So I think people also work with personalities. If they like my personality, they would tend to work with me. If they like someone else's personality, they would tend to work with them. At the end, the client is looking for results. Yeah. If they get the results, whatever you do, mm-hmm. I think they are happy. So if you tell me, um, more than focusing on competition, I focus on my own forte, mm-hmm. my own style, got and it. the way I work with my clients. So now that you talk about discipline, I got a nice space to talk about something else. What about your house? You said you in your introduction that you are a you are a father, and uh, we know you are a single father. And uh, like you said that with your clients, you're very, uh, you know, uh, disciplined and you're strict. What about home? How are you at home? With so family? at home also, I'm very disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> and I also ensure that both my kids are disciplined. If you look into today's time, I mean, it's a holiday going on. They both have a schedule to follow. Mm-hmm. They both have a calendar to follow. What's the age? So, so one is eleven, one is fourteen. Okay, and now they have a calendar. They have a calendar. They've been working with the calendar for almost four years now. Okay. Um, because being a single parent, if You and that's the, a message to all the parents. Yeah, if you work with the calendar, I think it becomes easy because I think the kids want routine. Even when I was leaving right now from my house to come here, my daughter was working out because in her calendar it says exercise. So she was working out on her own. Mm-hmm. She has an app. She follows that app. She does it for forty five minutes. My son works out every evening for forty five minutes. Um, they both have um, things. So some of the things that you can put into it is yes, of course, schooling is one thing. So of course they study. Um, I ask them to read books. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I don't have kids' book in my house. The only books I have is my book, and they both read my books. So oh, I have one, one as well. <laughs> the Mastering Time with Muni Santani. Right. So that's another book that, and both of them have read this book. Okay. They both follow um, every single principle in this book. Yeah, I see. There's there's lot of things. How you manage your time, your daily tasks. Yes. How you prioritize your works. This is a wonderful book, and yeah. I'll recommend everyone to read that. Thank you. So they do that. They also do. Uh, so my son is supposed to do some business research every day. They are supposed to watch some motivational videos every day. Mm-hmm. Um, if possible, they are supposed to come and share me what did they learn. One thing they learn from that motivational video. They are supposed to pray every day. Both are, both of them are supposed to exercise, and one of them is also supposed to dance every day. Okay. <laughs> so she's supposed to my daughter is supposed to make one minute of dance every day, and either show it to me or put it on Instagram and mm-hmm. show it to me. So again, that's. A constructive way. So they have a full round uh, calendar. I have a calendar to work with them. So you are implementing your coaching everywhere. Everywhere. House to yeah. Office everywhere. So as I would say that you know, as an entrepreneur, you want to run your business on its own. Got you it. know, on an autopilot. I am running my house exactly right. like that. So now, uh, Munir, uh, we see a lot. This word very common in your ventures: mastering time, mastermind. So now let's it's time to talk about mastermind your new baby what is mastermind doing how how is it helping people so basically mastermind is a group of people entrepreneurs mm-hmm. who come together to support each other mm-hmm. right they become your accountable partners mm-hmm. they give you feedback mm-hmm. right on how you're doing they also think of new possibilities mm-hmm. right they create that accountability structure and so that you are on focus and on track like entrepreneurs we don't answer to anyone So you know, today I want to do. I'll do it. I'm not supposed. Nobody pushes me, so I'm okay, yeah. right? A mastermind becomes like a structure where people are actually supporting and pushing you to achieve your goals at a faster rate. It's a support structure where we want to build a community where we are supporting each other uh, grow. Because as entrepreneurs, we f- we say we are you are lonely at the top. Yeah. Right. We sure. face challenges every single day, and we don't know who to go and share these challenges. You yeah. can't share it with your family, your staff, or whoever you wish to. So is there a place where I can become weak, let my guards down, and say, "Sorry, I don't know. Can you tell me what to do?" And mastermind becomes that place where people come and share their challenges, and we support them, we help them grow and go to next level. So I have heard that it's just not even a year, and you already have six masterminds running. Yes. And each mastermind has. Ten to twelve people. Yes. Uh, so each mastermind has ten people from different industries. We don't take overlapping categories. And yes, we have six. We are in the, into the pipeline of formation of seven and eight. Got it. So now that we are talking about mastermind accountability and entrepreneurs and their problems, 
So obviously I must ask, I cannot stop myself to ask you, what is the biggest or the worst challenge that you have seen among in your masterminds? Um, if, you, if you would like to share any, any one challenge at which you help that person uh, solve it. So basically, um, one of the things that in our mastermind, we sign an, sign an NDA, so we don't share challenges outside. It's an interesting question. So we've seen all the challenges across the board from legal to to partners problem to business growth problem to cash flow problem. But I'll give you a simple story. Um, one of our mastermind member had a big cash flow problem, a big turnover and a big cash flow problem. And um, he came to me and said, I have a big cash flow problem. What do I do? How do I solve it? And I had another mastermind from another mastermind group who has been very good when it comes to cash flow. So I said, give me some time. I approached the other person and I said, we need to support this guy uh, 101. So what can we do? And interestingly, the other guy told me that um, only if he comes to have an ice cream with me, which is with him, I will help him out. So I said, okay, and what is the criteria? So he said, salt ice cream at Jumara at 11 p.m. at night. So <laughs> interestingly, I went to the guy and said, okay, if you want to solve a problem, you have to have an ice cream. And that's the condition. And he said, okay, let me try it. And I was there in that meeting. Uh, we met at 11 and we were there till the morning 2, 2.30. And some of the tools that the other person shared uh, were amazing. Okay. And the story is that the guys implemented all the tools and today six months down the line, they have overcome their cash flow problem to an extent that now they have some money that they are trying to save that can help the business constantly. Okay. So this is a very small story, but a very powerful story where, you know, just by one ice cream. Yeah, um, you can. Interestingly, the guy who Seriously. the guy who invited for the meeting also paid for the ice cream. So <laughs> this entire meeting was a was a free. Yeah, I've known so many organizations, but very less organizations I know where entrepreneurs can go and say what they're yes. bad at. Yes. So now uh, we got to know about your achievements, your history, your life, your family. So now what's your plan for the next five years? Let's see how a coach plans his five years. So if you ask me for the next five years, we want to take this mastermind family to 500 members. Okay. Right now we are at 60. Mm -hmm. um, we want to be at 500. Mm -hmm. Inshallah, before five years, if you know we are pushing hard, we are going. We also want to take mastermind global. Uh, we are planning to we have opened up an office in Bombay. We are planning to open up more branches in India. Today morning, we had a meeting with somebody who wants to take it to another country. So again, the discussion is still on. So we want to take it global where we have an international family around where okay. people are not just working within themselves, but also working cross country. Mm -hmm. We want to do a global convention mm -hmm. uh, next within two years okay. where we invite all the mastermind to one place. We block two days, we block a full hotel for us. Wow. And, and then masterminds in the room. Yes. And we bring <laughs> everybody from different part of the world to learn from each other, to meet each other. We also want to come up with technology where they can connect with each other internationally okay. and they can do business. They can learn from each other and take it to next level. So uh, does money alarms you or your plan is only expanding mastermind? Do you have any numbers in your mind? Where you want to reach, you want to become a... Billion? So the idea is that, you know, we mastermind membership is not free. There's a yearly charge. So of course, that's becomes my focus that as soon as I say 500 and we have an X amount that we charge, okay. that's the amount that we are looking forward to, to reach. Wow. Right. So of course, I mean, you know me as a coach, I don't worry. I don't work without a number. Number oh, is, number is yeah. my <laughs> game without a number. And then we have broken down to every year. Okay. So from 2025 to 2024, 23, 22, 21 and 2020. Okay. So right now we are working on our, all our 2020 goals. Okay. Uh, touch wood, until till now we are all on track on with track. our goals. We know your goal. What what your goal is? What if you fail? Like most of the people, they have their plans. What if I am successful? I'll buy a Lamborghini. I'll buy a villa. But what if you fail? What if your plan doesn't work? What so, if mastermind doesn't work? So interestingly, um, there are no failures. Only feedback. Uh -huh. Right. That's another NLP. Um, wow. You know, principle. We so I always tell people that you know, let's say you want to enter a house and you have a bunch of keys and you enter and you put one first key and the door doesn't open. Mm -hmm. You don't consider yourself as a failure, saying, "Okay, today I'll sleep outside my house." You say, "Okay, I've tried this; it doesn't work. Let me put another key." But you'll try to keep the learning, which means you keep the first key away so that you don't mix it with the other key. Right. Yes. So that's the learning. And if you're very smart, you'll put some sticker on that key. So next time when you want to open the door, you just have to find that key and the door opens. Yeah. So for me, there are no failures, only feedback. Um, if something doesn't work, I would like to learn from that and change and say, okay, I learned this. 
what is next i want to do and i would probably try to implement that i'm in a constant mode of learning on a feedback mechanism mm. i talk to a lot of people i mean even with mastermind i keep talking with people how can we take it to next level and if something doesn't work i want to say okay what were some of the key learnings what did i what were my blind spots yeah that i wasn't able to see yeah. and then can i improve these blind spots and take it to next level mm. i don't keep changing my goals my goals are very much clear in my head and in my vision board and i want to focus on that but i keep changing it's like you know let's say we want to reach from point a to point b right right mm. and there are three ways to reach got it right if one uh, road it has a block or as a you would take a detour to reach to your destination you don't change your destination yeah you might take a detour so you say that failure is just an option it it's on you if you choose it or not yeah they say you are you know i don't know there's a, there's a saying you say you don't you you have not failed until you have accepted it yeah right till you keep trying you've never failed that's a great so message trying, to startups youngsters and every entrepreneur especially at this uh, difficult times uh so i think we need people like you every business needs people like you thank you so now i have prepared a rapid fire for you okay, okay? i would like to shoot it so now if given an option if you have to give priority so i'll give you two options you have to choose one okay money or peace money or peace so i'll tell you another concept if you don't mind so in entrepreneurship um or is a problem uh, this concept comes from um, our parents and our teachers right or the society that we grew up in we've always told in childhood that either you can have this or this yeah right so you know the parents would say either you can have an ice cream or a burger as entrepreneurs we don't agree to that again as a coach i would like to say we come with a concept of call also and okay i want burger also and i want an ice cream okay right because to get one you don't have to give up another one okay it's a myth Mm-hmm. right so people think oh if so normally people come and ask me ask me money or happiness both who says that i have to select one i can also have money and also i want happiness just to strategize yeah it's all about you know people say oh do you want work or or family life i can work and also have a family life it's all about my discipline if i put my discipline and my calendar in place i can manage both of them yeah so you ask me the question i'll give you interesting answer what i feel exactly. um, suits me <laughs> already you have spoiled my uh, rapid fire but still i'll ask okay so money and peace i've already asked so i want money and and peace family or clients i want clients and i will balance out my family uh work or workout oh this is interesting both are important for me i work mm-hmm. and also i work out regularly you've seen me i'm very finicky about my physique and fitness and all that yeah i know i'm i'm not i'm yet to start again i put it into my calendar <laughs> and i just do it brain or heart both brain also and heart because we say at the end of the day if your in fact we say heart and head h and h if h and h matches you are at the right place wow learning or winning learning to win okay dream or reality to dream as much as possible and then convert it into a reality okay achieve it oxygen or mastermind it's oxygen mastermind group uh, oxygen management consultant is the mother company and mastermind is a service that we provide so now with 60 people it's like a family now okay that's lovely so i've got awesome answers Thank best you. answers i've got to any rapid fire thank you <laughs> so now my final as we are uh, concluding this interview i would like you to give some message to the entrepreneurs out there startups out there who want to start their business and what is your message or who are already running businesses what is your message to them so basically um, people who are running the message uh, businesses i don't think they need any message they are already running a business so they are already into this journey and i'm sure they are enjoying this journey people who want to start business i think if you believe in yourself if you have an idea if you believe that you can put this idea into reality and make a difference in your life and people life people's life then you should actually do it right sometimes people have a myth that um, starting a business i need to have a million dirhams i mean talk to rupa and she'll give you 10 other options how to make be an owner in just few uh, minutes and start your business again people think that when i become an entrepreneur i'll work less i think that's another myth when you become an entrepreneur you work more yeah. when you are an employee you work 8 hours and you switch off i always say once an entrepreneur is always an entrepreneur even when you go home your brain is still working as an entrepreneur to do what's next what you want to do next in the business on a weekend you are still thinking as an entrepreneur sure. so entrepreneur then becomes a part of life you cannot be a part time entrepreneur 
it doesn't work that way but if you if you believe in an idea then take a jump yeah. and enjoy this journey right entrepreneurship is a journey there are good times bad times but you if you go through that journey in a nice way you keep learning keep reflecting and keep moving forward then nothing can stop you wow and if you still have problem after becoming an entrepreneur join us at mastermind we help everybody to go to next level yeah yeah thank you so much munir thank you rupa for, for having me here today uh, and uh, putting across such a meaningful message thank you. Thank uh, you. to our audience so audience uh, thank you so much for viewing next week we will come with another dynamic entrepreneurs if you want to know more about munir samdani you should log into his website address so you can please subscribe and go research him and contact him if you really want to do something great in your business thank you thank you thank so you. much thank you